Hello. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about aliases for types in Go and show you how they work. Type aliasing is a controversial feature. A proposal for it appeared before Go version 1.8, and there were many discussions whether the idea of adding them would be good and how exactly they should be implemented. But anyway, in Go version 1.9, type aliases were finally added to the language syntax, and anybody could use them now. Before you start, you're going to need to update your Go version to at least 1.9. Visit the official website and get a package for your system. To check the current version of Go, you could run the Go version command. The main problem that type aliases are solving is about conflicts during the code refactoring process when types are being moved from one package to another or being renamed. Let me show this using an example. We have a package called A that defines a constant, a variable, and the function with the type. For example, we have a client package that uses all this stuff to find an A package. That works just fine, at least for now. Then during the code refactoring phase, another package called B is created. It defines the same, but a bit differently. In future, this package can introduce new and compatible changes, but for now, let's keep it simple. The problem is that it's not possible to immediately update all clients to reference new package B instead of package A. This migration cannot be made instantly. We can avoid this problem by doing a gradual code repair. We can go into the old package A and make some aliases to entities of package B. In Go, it was always possible to make aliases for constants, variables, and even functions, but there was no way to make aliases for type definition. As you can see there, even if you've managed to create something that looks like a type alias, it's still a distinct type that belongs to package A, and it must be explicitly typecast before passing to function from package B. So far so good, but this conflict becomes unavoidable when we want to do a signature match for your functions. As for this one, we just define a foo func type in package B, and it has a foo type from package B in its signature. So the function from the package A wouldn't simply match this because it has an incompatible type in its arguments. It has a full type for package A, not B. It's not the same type for the type checker. Remember the topic. Since version 1.9, Go provides this essential solution that simply declares a type to be exactly the same as the other one. Let's check this out. Put an equal sign there, and now food type for package A should be the same as food type for package B indistinguishable for the client. It's okay now. Even the function signature matches the foo func type. And if you're going to check the equivalence of the types using the reflect package, yes, they are equivalent. Well, that's it. So what do we learn here? As a code meets a refactoring phase, some types are being renamed and moved across packages. And because clients cannot track the changes in real time, we need to keep the alt code in place until they all migrate. And that's why type aliases were introduced in Go, simply to define two types to be the same for Go runtime. Thank you.